What's up, HRV? I'm Milo Clarkson. And I'm Keone Toktai. Welcome to the What's Up, our weekly show about what's going on at the high school. More than half of the U.S. population have received their first COVID vaccine. Now it's HRV's turn. Christian Nicolescu from the Student-Based Health Center has more information for us. Hey, you guys, good morning. This is Kristen, your medical provider at the School-Based Health Center. I am here this morning to remind you that the COVID-19 vaccine events at HRV are happening and registration is live. If you are 16 to 18 years old and haven't signed up for this yet, this is your opportunity to get the Pfizer vaccine. It is the only vaccine that is approved for your age group and it will be available on campus for these events on April 30th and May 7th. You can sign up to register for your appointment at our website for, with the registration link or with the link on our Instagram account at HRVHSSBHC or you can scan the QR codes that are on the flyers that should be hanging around all over school and in your ELC class right now. I know some of you may be nervous about getting this vaccine. Some of you may lack confidence in this vaccine. And I've heard a lot of myths and misconceptions about the COVID-19 vaccine. I can't cover them all today in a two minute video, but I do want to address the top three that I hear all the time. One of the most common myths I hear about this vaccine is that it was produced too quickly to be trustworthy. Let's talk about the production for a second. First of all, the technology has been under development and research for over 30 years. Secondly, Companies around the globe partner together to fast track this vaccine. Usually it's just one company working on a vaccine at a time. And then third, a lot of money was donated towards this effort. So when you partner the money with the global cooperation, we were able to really fast track this vaccine to the public to start saving some lives. The second most common myth I hear about this vaccine is that it will change your DNA. And while the Pfizer vaccine is an mRNA vaccine, it doesn't have the capability of entering your cell's nucleus to change your DNA. And that's where the DNA lives, is in your cell's nucleus. To get into a nucleus, a substance needs a special password or an invitation. And the mRNA vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, doesn't have that special password. It doesn't have the invitation into the nucleus, so it can't change your DNA. The last myth I want to talk about is that the COVID-19 vaccine gives you a COVID-19 infection. And that isn't true because the COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain live virus. What you may experience after vaccination are side effects like headache, body aches, chills, maybe a fever. This indicates that your immune system is doing its job. Remember you can sign up by clicking the registration link on our website, by clicking the link in our Instagram bio, or by scanning the QR code on the flyers all throughout school. I am really excited for these events and hope to see you there. Bye. We have been talking to Aspire leader, Lisa Roberts, about what each grade should be doing to prepare for college. This week, we bring you the final installment, The Freshman. What you do your freshman year really dictates what's gonna happen to you by your senior year and what your choices are gonna be. So some of the things we talk about to the freshmen um, are that, you know, take your challenging classes. Um, some of the classes that we require here for high school graduation are not necessarily all the classes you need to go to a four-year university. Um, Two-year, yes, but not necessarily a four-year. So we're trying to set you up to make sure you have that option into a four-year. So um, there's specific requirements like Algebra 2, you have to pass with a C minus or better. So think about those things as you're rolling down uh, your years. Um, so good grades in, you know, 3.0 to 3.0 to 4.0. 3.0 is like a minimum for most of our schools here in Oregon. But if you're looking at an Ivy, oh boy. So 4.0 is really what you're looking at. 3.9, 3.8, those, those are all fine too. It's just the classes that you took. So if you have a lot of AP and really hard classes, a 3.8 is great. 3.9 is even better. So the, your grades really matter. Um, and get involved. Um, there's lots of opportunities at the school to get involved. Even during this COVID situation, um, you can be involved in virtual things and then write them down. So those, just those three little things um, are very important your freshman year. This girl's soccer season, Vanessa scored a rocket of a goal. But was it really a goal? We sent Amelia to find out. If you have talked to a player from the girls' varsity soccer team, there is a good chance they mentioned a strange goal that, at first glance, appears to fly into the net no problem. Here is that goal. 
It went in, right? However, the official call on the field is no goal. So what happened? If you slow the video down, the ball actually goes over the net in the most unlikely way. Normally, when a goal is scored like that, the ball follows the net down into the ground. Vanessa's kick follows almost exactly that trajectory, even though it was kicked over the bar. It even bounces off the inside of the post while still being outside the net. Here you can see the ball pass directly behind the crossbar, proving that it is in fact behind the goal. The correct call was a bitter ending to a hard-fought game. That's our show for the week. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with some footage from the music department's spring recitals. First, you'll see sophomore Sophie Biecker on the flute. Then you'll see Josh Humane on the trombone. Come back next week and we'll tell you what's up.